This video presents the working principles of the hydropneumatic energy wheel. The purpose of this disclosure is to clear up confusion that sprouted from the last video. As a recap, the hydropneumatic energy wheel is a system that comprises of pistons mounted in the wheel of a vehicle to compress and harness the ground reaction force for electric vehicle battery charging. There's an air version and a hydraulic version of the system. This video will focus on the working principles of the hydraulic version as it is more effective and complex. Here's the hydraulic system overview. A piston mounted inside the wheel compresses and displaces a larger piston with amplified force. The amplified force can be used to spin an alternator for battery charging. Pascal's principle is important to understand the concept. Pressure within an enclosed body of incompressible fluid remains constant. If a force is applied to push a small piston, the reaction force applied at the larger piston amplifies with respect to the cross-sectional area of the piston. This is why we're able to lift a heavy vehicle by applying a small force. The equations show a relationship between the force and cross-sectional area. It is also important to understand the conservation of momentum. This image shows elastic collision. The bodies separate following collision. Energy is transferred from one body to the other upon collision. If initial conditions are known, velocities of the two bodies can be computed. Using Pascal's principle, pistons can be sized to amplify the force applied at the smaller piston to spin an alternator shaft upon impact with the larger piston rod. Archimedes' principle is another important principle to understand. An object placed on a body of water is subject to buoyancy force that keeps the object afloat. A floating object does not induce a reaction force on the bottom platform. Upon combination of Pascal's law, conservation of momentum, and Archimedes' principle, the reaction force as a result of impact with the alternator will not induce much of a resistance from the perspective of the smaller piston. The reaction force will dissipate into the fluid and the body of the vehicle where the larger piston is mounted. There is a loss, however. For incompressible fluid, the volume of fluid displaced on both sides must be equal. This implies that the piston on the larger side will rise by a smaller height compared to the smaller piston. This means that we have smaller piston movement on the output side. The winds outrun the losses. For incompressible fluid, the initial and final velocities of the pistons are conserved. This means that if a vehicle is traveling at x miles per hour, the velocity of the output piston rod will also be x miles per hour during impact. We have lost piston height, but it's a fair trade. The idea is to let the output shaft with amplified force collide with the alternator shaft. Let the alternator free spin without restricting the movement to the output shaft displacement. And repeat at every iteration with respect to the smaller piston position on the wheel. For the first iteration, assuming that the mass of the output piston rod and the mass of the alternator shaft is equal, the alternator shaft can be spun with the same velocity of the vehicle upon impact. Connecting the alternator to the battery will result in battery charging. The only resistive force that the power supply will witness is the rolling resistance and the weight of the additional components. If we were to make an educated estimation, the resistive force 
will not exceed 500 pounds for a mid-sized sedan. The resistive force is much smaller compared to the impact force. The power required to compress the piston is much smaller compared to the power produced by the alternator. More power means more energy. We have recovered a massive amount of energy back into the battery using the hydropneumatic energy wheel. We've just tricked the laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Here's a link to the concept introduction video.